Okay, welcome back. Let's uh, pick up from Sister Lucy's comment here on the chat. She says, um, so when we come across any sick person, can we pray over them, voluntarily speak God's word? Yes, of course, we can do that. So, uh, sister, when they don't uh, ask, I mean, they, when they don't when they don't ask for prayers, can we do it by ourselves voluntarily? Um, of course. I mean, you you can do uh -huh. it, mm -hmm. but don't force them. That's oh. the whole thing. Uh, yeah. Okay. Are you saying we we'll, you want to pray for them by yourself, or you want to go up to them and pray over them? Up to them, and I, I happened to meet our uh, relatives last week. Okay. There was a strong feeling to pray over them, but uh, because they didn't ask for any prayer, I means they didn't. It means there was no such things from that side, so oh. I couldn't pray over them like in their house. Okay, so uh, I think a good thing to do is to just ask them. Uh, okay. And some you could say something like. Uh, I would love to pray for you. Would it be okay if I prayed for you in the name uh, of Jesus? And okay. they might say uh, yes. Then uh, you pray. Okay, okay. Thanks, sister. Thank you. Yeah, sure, sister. All right. Uh, any other questions before we get into the next chapter here, which is about the origin of Satan and demons? Okay, so something that I believe maybe you have not studied uh, earlier in the other courses of the first semester. So uh, this should give us some insight about where Satan came from and what the kingdom of darkness is like, what the characteristics of demons are like. Uh, why are we trying to learn this? Why is, of, why is it of interest to us? Shouldn't we be learning about the cross of Jesus? And we are sitting here uh, studying about the origin of Satan. What do you think? Correct. So uh, Sagar said that we need to know who is our enemy and what are his strengths so that we know how to take over. Right? We know how to battle and overcome our enemy. So that is the intention. And as I stated in the last class, we can go to two extremes. One is we say, Satan doesn't exist. I don't believe there is a, a, you know, a kingdom of darkness. But we know that the scriptures clearly tell us about a kingdom and a Satan who is ruling over that kingdom. The other extreme is we become very interested where we want to know everything about Satan and what he's thinking and what he had for breakfast. And, you know, that is very unhealthy. We should not go to the extremes. Both the extremes are beneficial for Satan. But we want to be in between where, yes, we are aware he exists and we know some details about him. But it's just to help us to tackle our enemy. That's about it. We are not obsessed or preoccupied with what the demons are doing, what are the demons going to do. You know, sometimes that's how believers are. We glorify the devil. We give the devil pulpit time. Whatever we are saying, we say, oh, the devil is so powerful. He did this, he did that. But when we keep doing that, what's happening is we are believing, first of all, that the devil is so powerful. And we're telling everybody how powerful the devil is. Right, so that they can also believe in the devil. That's not the intention. We shouldn't be doing that. Give God your time, your interest, study more about you know the cross and all. But what we are doing right now is just for awareness. That's all. Okay, everyone uh, with me on this? Does it uh, you know make sense to you? All right. So with that in mind, we will uh, see what scriptures have to say about Satan. Now, a lot of questions are asked about where did Satan come from? Because Genesis chapter 1, we see the creation of the world. And then suddenly, Genesis chapter 3, uh, there is a serpent. He starts talking to Eve. 
and she is convinced by the serpent and sin corrupts the world god um, punishes adam and eve sends them out of the garden okay the story begins like that now people ask the question yes we know say the serpent is satan but where did he come from because we know where this world came from god created the heavens and the earth god created you know the the vegetation the creatures man and woman who created satan who is satan these are the kind of questions that we ask now there are some chapters in the bible that reveal some things to us now let me tell you first of all we don't have all the answers that we can make a movie right all the details are there who said what when did he come when did he go we don't have details like that we have a little bit here and a little bit there and we can gain uh, some understanding that's about it okay then there'll be a lot of gaps where if we are not careful we might try to make up stories so don't try to make up stories whatever we understand we understand and leave it at that okay so now let's go back we said creation god created the heavens and the earth so when creation happened though that's the beginning right um of the world that we know of god is eternal the bible talks about a dateless past okay so the heavens and the heavenly creatures existed before god created this world for us our calendar started from when god created this world okay then we started counting the age of the earth you know how many thousand years and all but even before we started our calendar there was a past which is sort of timeless uh, and we don't know the duration of its existence we we are we are just calling it a dateless past now in this past is where satan existed okay and we have some details about um, you know who he is and uh, what he did but how how did we come to know about the things that satan did before the world was created the simple answer is revelation okay the passages that are written the people who wrote those passages god by revelation shared with them the things that have happened before the creation of the world and they have captured it by the inspiration of the holy spirit so some passages that we can look at would be isaiah chapter 14 and uh, we will also go ahead and look at passages like daniel 10 uh daniel 20 uh, sorry ezekiel 28 a little bit later on okay so these passages reveal to us about the existence of an angel by the name of lucifer so are we all clear so far by revelation god gave us understanding of some things now let's go to isaiah chapter 14 okay i think we won't read through the entire passage here um because it's a rather long passage so isaiah 14 verses 1 through 25 um so what we see there is we see um that the king of babylon is spoken about okay the king of babylon is spoken about um and later on you know the king of babylon was defeated and the persians took over the king of persia took over but as you read that passage there seems to be some uh, sort of a parallelism on the things that are happening on the earth uh, to the spiritual beings that exist okay so in a sense that king of babylon uh, this representing wickedness or an oppression 
uh, rulership, you know, of the evil kind is a representation of Satan. Okay. Uh, and similarly, you know, as, as you read on, you will find in other passages like Daniel chapter 10, if you recall, you know, we said the prince of uh, Greece, the prince of Persia. Are we talking about real kings on the earth? No. Yes, there are real kings and kingdoms here on the earth, but we would notice that in the kingdom of darkness, there are uh, spirits that mirror rulers and authorities on the earth. Okay, so when we uh, when we read about the king of Babylon, the idea we get is it's referring to Satan. Then you, know, you read on, you, you read about king of Persia, king of Greece, uh, the angels of God, right? When Daniel was praying, they were battling the king of uh, Persia, the, the, the prince of Persia, the prince of um, Greece. Who are these princes? They are spirits of wickedness. But they have these parallel names to the existing kings and princes here. Why is that so? Maybe because they are regional spirits. They are the ones who rule over that region here on the earth. Are you understanding? So what Satan seems to be doing and the way his kingdom seems to be is there are parallels. He mirrors authorities and structures here. And uh, there are representatives among the spirits of darkness who take charge of that region. And they rule and reign with their wickedness. Okay, So uh, that's how he works. And we see that, uh, you know, we thank God. We've already said that the kingdom of light always overcomes the kingdom of darkness. But for us right now, all we are saying is these kingdoms exist, or rather this kingdom exists, and these spirits also exist. Okay. Now, let's read about Lucifer. Okay. Let's turn in our Bibles to uh, Ezekiel chapter 28. We'll read a few scriptures. And then I will come back and explain more about Lucifer. So if we are there, could somebody please read verse 12, verse 13, verse 14, and 16, please? Is or read, read from 12 to 16. Yeah. Is it good? Uh, no. Shall I go uh, ahead, sister? Lucy, just a moment. Somebody started reading here, so we'll we'll allow. Uh... Oh, so you can carry on. Okay, Sister Lucy, you can read. From twelve to sixteen, Sister. Yes. Yes. Ezekiel twenty-eight from twelve. Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre, and say to him, Thus says the Lord of Lord God, You wear the zeal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You wear in Eden the garden of God. Very precious stone was your covering, the sardis, topaz, and diamond, burl, onk, and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within, and you sinned. Therefore I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God, and I destroyed you, ho covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Mm, okay. Thank you, sister. Thank you so much for reading this section. This is a description of the angel called Lucifer. Okay, the angel called Lucifer. Uh, and uh, we understand when we look at, let's say, verse 12 here, it says, um, you were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. So when God created Lucifer, this angel, we know that he already had wisdom. And he was beautiful. Right? So he carried wisdom, he carried beauty. What else? Verse 13, it states, 
you were in eden the garden of god every precious stone was your covering the sardis topaz and diamond beryl onyx and jasper sapphire turquoise and emerald with gold the workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created so we recognize here that he seems to have wealth because we are speaking about precious stones gold right that was a part of a uh, part of him and so he's very wealthy that we can um, recognize now let's read on you know the, over here it also says the workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created so maybe you know timbrels and pipes got to do with music got to do with uh, entertainment so that was part of his creation part of maybe some of the skills that he had and now let's move on we are looking at verse 14 now and it says you were the anointed cherub who covers i established you you were on the holy mountain of god you walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones so was lucifer anointed by god yes he also had anointing okay he had anointing he had access to god the best place you can be your on the mountain holy mountain of god uh, and when we look at you know cherub there are different kinds of angels uh, we could associate him with uh, worship so an angel of worship so when you read all this you're like everything is going for this angel right there's wealth there's wisdom there's beauty there's skill and ability for uh, you know entertainment uh, anointing in the presence of god so it's absolutely wonderful god created lucifer wonderfully positioned him for worship and gave him you know uh, all all this glory that he already carried now let's read on we can look at a uh, verse 16 also here of ezekiel 28 it says by the abundance of your trading you became filled with violence within so slowly it's changing slowly the um, uh, the story seems to be changing but one thing that verse 16 is revealing is your abundance of trading now i know in one class one student asked me ma'am what was lucifer trading frankly i don't know you know because i don't think there's any other scripture that gives us uh, at least i didn't find it uh, what exactly was he trading i don't know but he was trading so that also shows us he was good at business right so very smart angel very blessed very beautiful very anointed okay so everything is so nice when uh, we go through ezekiel chapter 28 here uh, but then of course we were reading that uh, sin came in and he got corrupted now one more scripture if you look at isaiah 14 verse 12 also says that he is the ruler of the nations okay so carrying power and authority this is the kind of person that he was then what happened if everything was so positive and god created lucifer so wonderfully what exactly happened we have passages of scripture that reveal to us that there was a war in heaven okay <coughs> um in revelation chapter 12 again we are not going to go through the entire passage i'm just giving you the highlights so i would request us to please go back and read all these passages isaiah 14 Ezekiel twenty-eight, Revelation chapter twelve. In Revelation chapter twelve, we see that uh, you know there was a, a war in heaven. Satan rebelled against God, and he took with him one third of the angels. So one third of the angels cooperated with Satan. Okay, and uh, now when they went against God, God had to throw them out, or rather cast them out of heaven. that's exactly what happened and that is how uh, satan and his demons fell 
they fell. And when we ask the question, going back to Genesis, uh, you know, chapter 3, the serpent came to Eve. So Satan was already there. When God created the world, he was there. And he was watching all this. Uh, and we know that from that point onwards till now, he's doing the same thing, trying to deceive, you know, trying to take away the blessings that God has given mankind, trying to destroy the lives of people. Because he's, he got corrupted, which is why he was thrown out of heaven. Now, if you continue to read like Isaiah 20, uh, Ezekiel 28 and verse 17, we'll see that sin actually corrupted him. Let me quickly read that for us. Verse 17 here of Ezekiel 27, it says, Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I laid you before kings that they might gaze at you. So you notice he became proud. Your heart was lifted up. So it's really scary that when God created a, 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 an angel so perfect, the angel got corrupted. Where did it all start? Pride. Okay, it started with pride. And pride has this property of uh, causing self-deception. So as Satan went ahead with pride, he sort of started imagining that, hey, I, I am so beautiful, I am so great, and you know, I have the wisdom and the ability, everything. Maybe I can be greater than God. Why should I be subject to God? I can be God, I can be greater than God. Right? He became deceived and he rebelled against God and God had to shut him out of heaven. Um, so this is what happened and that is how Satan was around here and uh, he deceived Eve. Now let us also quickly look at, I'm not reading the entire passage, but I think it will be useful to read at least two scriptures from Isaiah 14. So we are going to uh, Isaiah chapter 14 from verse 12. Okay, I will read from verse 12. It's talking about the fall of Lucifer. It says, How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation, on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. So any of these passages, uh, you know, when we read them, like this one and um, Revelation 12, there's a lot of prophetic language. And even uh, when, when we study them, the timelines, you might find that it's a little hard to understand. When did this happen? And then when did that happen? Don't worry too much about it right now. Just overall, what we have figured out is Satan was an angel, a very perfectly created angel by God. But God corrupted because of sin. What is the sin? Pride. Pride led to deception. And notice, I read from Isaiah because I want you to see here what happened. It says in verse 13, you have said in your heart. He got deceived. And he's saying, I will ascend into heaven. I will. So notice there he's going on. I will. I will. I will. I will. Then what does that tell us? God created heavenly beings also with free will. Okay? Now, whenever I come to this section, people ask, students ask this question. When God knew Lucifer is going to do all this, why did he create Lucifer? He should have not created Lucifer only. But you see, the God we serve, he is not insecure. He may know what is going to happen, but still, he creates everyone perfect, gives free will, and says, okay, I'm giving you a chance. It's up to you now. 
right? So God created Lucifer. He had the option because he's saying, I will. He could have even said, I won't. But he made a choice through free will and went against God. And when we sin, what does the Bible say? For the wages of sin is death. You know, and the gift of God is eternal life. There are consequences. So we don't know everything that happened in heaven. How did the rebellion happen? What did Satan come and tell God? And what, what? Did God give him a chance? Did God give him many chances? We don't know. But knowing the nature of God, we know he's just. It may have come to the point where God knew the only option is get him out of heaven. Enough. Enough is enough. And so he had to be thrown out of heaven with his angels. And the Bible teaches us one third of the angels he took and he was cast out of heaven. Okay, So this is a little bit about the origin of Satan. And I'm sure it gives us an explanation uh, to many of our questions that we may have. I'll just come to questions. I know I also saw Shani's hand raised. Um, let me also quickly say this. The demons, you know, we are saying casting out demons, demons, demons. Who are these demons? From the explanation that we have here, demons are fallen angels. When did they fall? They fell with Lucifer. You know, those one third of the angels who were thrown out of heaven, they are demons. And they are the ones you know, who are uh, in the kingdom or the army of Satan. And he rules over them. He tells them what to do. And they are still sort of you know, doing their work here on Earth. So uh, some things to clarify right? Your our understanding about Satan and the demons. And I'll come back and share more. Let's now have time for questions. So I'll first come to Shani. I had seen her hand raised. Shani, uh, we could take up your question if it's still OK. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure what you were saying about like the king of Babylon, Persia. I just want to make sure I was getting an understanding. So those are um, actually those are people on Earth. But then also you also have spirits named after him. That's why not for those those people. That's why I was confused. That's why I want to get clarification about that. You're right. You got it right, Shani. So there are real actual people and rulers. What? Satan does is he mirrors them to have demonic representatives so that they can rule and reign over that particular region, right? So if, oh. if there's a, yeah. So are these so are these rulers are they evil then? If he's trying to remember, he's trying to get um spirits that are kind of trying to mimic them or these evil rulers then. Uh yes, you could say that. Not so much mimic, but it's more like uh, being in charge of that territory and doing their own thing. So this king might be doing his work as a ruler, but then you have uh, an evil representative um, spirit okay, uh, that will take charge of that territory of Babylon or Greece or Persia or anywhere else and uh, sort of unleash their evil works. OK, OK, I understand. OK, that clarified it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, I'm coming here to our chat section here. And uh, OK, so Shani is asking, which scriptures are you reading? Uh, initially, we read from Ezekiel 28, verse 12 to 17. And then we came back and read from Isaiah chapter uh, 14. I'll tell you exactly where. Yeah, again, we read from 12. Hold on. Yeah. 12 to 15 is what we read. So those were the scriptures that we read through just now. All right. Uh, yes, let's let's have more questions. Yes, Akhil. So when the scripture says, uh, uh, you know, God anointed Lucifer, and uh, because of his pride, is you can uh, can we conclude that because of his pride he lost the anointing? Mm, because of his pride he lost the anointing. 
and uh, how similar is it in our lives huh. that you know when we are anointed for any work of the ministry in whatever yeah. scale mm. uh, are there any things that you know that we can infer yeah so yeah when it comes to the nature of anointing when we read about it we read about it more in the context of you know believers and god's people uh, serving him uh, we do know that anointing increases decreases okay so by uh, my faith by my lifestyle uh, anointing can increase but the opposite can also be true like if i am constantly uh, disobedient to god and you know all that it can decrease so coming from that perspective uh i i cannot give you scripture and verse but i do believe that he has uh, he lost the anointing because the anointing is meant to draw people to god but you don't see any of that in satan's agenda like you don't in fact it's the opposite what he does is the opposite so obviously where is the anointing there you know and god will not anoint uh, somebody who is rebellious like this so that's the answer to your first question and uh, what was the other part but how do you infer that in our lives so sometimes when we get carried away with pride and... yeah yeah so um, it's a warning really that is before us to know that if somebody like satan or lucifer at that time was so blessed but lost everything because of pride the same can happen to any one of us right so that's why when we start our course we take us through uh, that book laying the axe to the root one of the issues that a believer needs to deal with is pride the the greatest problem with pride is it leads to self deception what is the meaning of self deception where it takes us to a place of thinking that we are right when we are actually wrong god knows we are wrong maybe people around us also know we are wrong but we are so proud that now we are believing you are all wrong i am right you know so that is self deception and that's the most dangerous place one of us, any one of us can ever be right self deception where uh, we've lost we've lost our rational thinking sanity yeah so it's dangerous it's a warning actually <laughs> i know right i hope your question is answered right okay great uh anyone else anything else that you may want to ask about satan yes yes mm -hmm. how he has access to god yeah you know yeah how does he have access to go to heaven right mm. see from uh, we know that in heaven uh, see when we read like matthew 6 we say on earth as it is in heaven okay on earth as it is in heaven because there are two kinds of rulerships if we read some of the passages in the bible we'll also come to uh, the name of satan the god of this world with a small g okay god of this world so satan is ruling in in this earth okay but in heaven who's ruling and reigning it's god so that is something that is settled it's very clear like as we read scriptures i know there is one instance in uh, the book of job where it says you know um job went into the presence of god now i i honestly don't think i can justify or you know i, I don't think i can answer that question i'm sorry i'm a little um, maybe i'll have to find out yeah uh, whether it was in heaven that he went or you know anywhere else in the presence of god that he actually went because from what we see satan is not in heaven he's not he's out of heaven yeah so that clarity uh, would anyone else have any thoughts on that if you are aware you can try to answer 
sister since god is only present he is uh, he can be available on earth correct so that's what even i'm so saying talk to him on the earth yeah so that that's what i also feel but i don't have other scriptures to back it up so maybe next class i can try to get back to you with an answer okay great um all right there's another question here okay shani i hope you got that question basically um the question was how could satan enter heaven because he's already cast out of heaven uh, in the case of job we know that he went and he took permission from god to afflict job so how did he enter heaven was the question and i said that i would need to look it up to be back with an answer for that question uh, now coming to john blessy's question here he says if satan lost everything but how still the demons are doing miracles how they have those powers also regarding music and worship when they fell from god still how the secular songs are having that much of craze okay good question um, blessy see when we say satan lost everything uh we are saying that he lost his privileges of being in heaven right uh but we know for a fact that he carries the knowledge uh that he was created with you remember uh at some point we talked about the seven mountains the mountain of politics business arts and entertainment uh religion so all these mountains which influence society we as believers we want to influence them through biblical principles and that's what we are heading towards but you see quite the opposite is happening in all these areas when you look at politics remember when we said influence right uh there can be institutions that are influenced by demons there can be uh, regions that are influenced by demons so what's happening satan utilizes his whatever ability he has or if you want to call that power and knowledge experience of the past to continue to corrupt these things so answering your question he has power he's not lost everything so to speak he has some power that's why jesus said i give you authority and all the power i give you power over unclean spirits right uh, oh, sorry uh, on the power of those spirits so they have some power that's the point that i'm trying to make uh, and no wonder he uses all his experience to influence business he can he was trading beauty he can he can you know sort of make it all skewed and say hey this is beauty you have to go towards that music of course he can because he's one of the best he was up there right in the in the coveted place in god's presence he knows everything he has every experience he he uh, therefore can corrupt that's what he's doing he's using his abilities to corrupt everything i hope your question is answered okay great yeah let's come back here um okay i will go with diksha's question before falling was there hell exist or there was just heaven okay very very good questions uh, did hell exist i i think it was created only after satan fell okay because till that time there was no need for a hell right all the heavenly hosts could live in heaven happily and uh, yeah but it's only after satan fell that god had to create hell is that fine great um yes brother sanjay yes i just wanted to add a thought to uh, john blessy's question on music the huh. secular music so uh, one one thing i've noticed being a music teacher myself is that all music is spiritual Mm. and there's no middle ground for music music it either points to christ or it is of the kingdom of light 
or music points away from Christ and it is of the kingdom of darkness. So music falls in two categories. There's no gray area. There's nothing in between. Either music will lead you to, to light or to Christ or music will lead you into darkness or to Satan. So looking at the spiritual nature of music today, because of the times we're living in, uh, most of the music from the secular world is leading people away from God or leading people into a different dimension or into a different, uh, you know, uh, a place which has, uh, you know, it, it, it almost like it's very subtle and deceptive. A lot of the secular music is very subtle and deceptive because as a music teacher, I've taught music and I've taught secular songs. I've read between the lines of the lyrics and you can see all of the lyrics and the music is pointing, you know, away from God. And so looking at it from that perspective, I, I would you know, encourage people to try to avoid listening to secular music and spend, you know, uh, listen to good gospel or Christian music. I, I'd leave it at that. Thank you, uh, Brother Sanjay. Thank you for that thought. Uh, I, I mean, since you're the music teacher, I just want to ask you, uh, but wouldn't there be some secular music which is good? Like if, if the content is still very much clean and, you know? Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. There, there are some good secular songs. There's no doubt about it. I mean, okay. uh, good lyrics and good music is out there. But uh, mm -hmm. again, again it, it's, a, it's, it's a choice. It's a, it's a personal choice. I mean, we, we as believers, no? again, we have a responsibility. If, if, uh, if Christ says, uh, uh, you know, reach the nations with the good news or preach the gospel to all creation, preaching mm -hmm. the gospel, if we use secular words and secular music, no, we're actually doing the works of the secular world. We're not doing the works of God. So again, yeah. it's a responsibility upon us like to, to invest sure. more into uh, you know, like gospel music or Christian music. That that's a thought from what you say. Okay, so I I get where you're coming from. So you're saying uh, we have to be discerning, and it's just easier to kind of focus on um, you know uh, uh, Christian music and just give your interest there because we know that it's it's going the right direction. Um, or okay, I'll just come back to the chat section here because there is another comment. Shubho, in church the miracles happening. Can it happen from Satan? I heard some men and women of God are operating from the other power. So yes, Shubo, uh, we have discussed about this. Uh, yes, it can happen from the other side. A good example is when Moses goes to Pharaoh's, Pharaoh's court before Pharaoh, we know that he did some miracles, but there were sorcerers and magicians of Pharaoh who also did miracles. So then we ask the question, how could they do it? They are not God's people. But there is power from the kingdom of darkness. They can also do miracles. They can also perform you know, all these uh, signs and wonders. But the question is, <coughs> we have to identify the source. Where is that power coming from? All right. So don't believe everything. Yeah, miracles are happening. But what is the source? So when we understand that the source is not God, then don't even pay any attention to those miracles. Oh, Ma'am, I, I have yes, a small Chico? question uh, that uh, if some, we don't know someone's personal relationship with God, means if uh, someone coming preachers or evangelists coming and preaching and uh, laying hand upon us, if they have something uh, connection with the devilic uh, world and they, they are laying hand, so the thing they have can come uh, into us, means that powers or that attractions or that Something can come upon us if they lay a hand and pray upon us. No, Shubo, don't don't worry about that. See, because uh, by faith, right? What did we say earlier? If you look at um, Luke ten nineteen, Jesus sent out the disciples and asked them to go cast out demon spirits. What did he say there? Nothing by any means shall hurt you. And this is before he went to the cross. Before that also, he's telling nothing will hurt you. Don't be afraid. Because we are from the kingdom of light. And what are we saying? The kingdom of darkness recognizes that we are from the kingdom of light. In fact, they'll be scared to do anything to us because we belong to the kingdom of light. But yes, if we have an open door, how to have an open door? We, we are fearing. Fear is the open door, especially in these cases. If we walk in fear, Though the demonic spirits cannot affect us, we are 
making a way for them to do something. See, if I keep believing, something will happen, something will happen. Then that belief, right, that fear, that is actually going to make those things happen. You got it? So we must not be afraid. Like if it just happened, you didn't know who this person was and, you know, maybe they're from the wrong source and they prayed a prayer or something. You don't worry about it. You just, um, you know, be bold in God. If it's not of God, it will not affect me. Right? So that is one thing. Second, you said, how do we know whether, you know, they, they are from God and all? We need discernment in our spirit. The Bible says, don't believe every spirit. They could be saying all the right things. Right? But something inside us, we are feeling something is wrong. I'm not able to tell what is wrong, but I'm not able to accept it with peace. Don't shut down that voice. If you're feeling like that, become alert. Okay? And how do we know if somebody is truly from God? You know, sometimes even miracles and supernatural cannot prove it. But the fruit, you shall know the tree by its fruit. Give it some time. And then observe what is the fruit of their ministry? How are the people turning out to be those who they are ministering to? We'll be able to tell, you know, whether they are uh, following the Lord in righteousness, whether they are established in the word of God, whether they are pursuing God in holiness, whether, you know, more uh, miracles are happening to set people free. These are all the fruits. So when we look at the fruit, we can tell what the tree is all about, right? So, yes, discern. Don't believe every spirit. Secondly, take time, okay? Uh, and uh, look at the fruit. The fruit will tell you. Don't go just by the miracles. We've been saying even the kingdom of darkness can do nice miracles, a lot of miracles, okay? So just because of miracles, we can't say, oh, this is God. It may not be God. I hope you got your answer, Shubo. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, right. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay, Sanjay shared a link about secular music. Yeah, thank you, Sanjay. Ashani, we have only two minutes. So um, please go ahead briefly, though. Yeah, it's just the question where you were saying, because I was about to ask that same question, too, about people having miracles, because there are people who are. Buddha's getting healed from, you know, cancer. That's the kind of question that he asks about how do they have miracles. But do those, like people getting healed from illnesses, do are those permanent? Since they're not from the kingdom of God, they're from the kingdom of darkness. Can that sickness come back on them? And that's what my question was. Yes. So you see, they're not drawing from the source. But what is the source for us when we talk about healing? Jesus has already carried our sicknesses, our griefs. Isaiah 53. Okay, and so the healing that we receive will be the real healing uh, because it's coming from covenant. Jehovah Rapha, I'm the God who heals you. But when you find that um, uh, maybe Satan and the demons, they are doing some miracles of healings, it won't be long lasting, Shani. But uh, let me just put it that way. Okay, thank you. Yeah, all right. Thank you. Uh, really good questions. And let's, let's uh, you know, keep keep interacting. It's, it's so good. Uh, let's close with a word of prayer. And uh, I'm going to leave this open for anyone, maybe somebody on campus or online to pray, please. Then we can end the class today. OK. Let us, let us pray. Heavenly, Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you again for this uh, for this uh, session of study. We just pray, Father, that uh, as you lead us into all truth, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will guide us to discern what is of you and what is not of you, Father. Father, we're here to learn and to grow and to become more like your Son, Jesus Christ, Father. And as we journey with you, Lord, through the word, Lord, let, let the word uh, renew our minds, Father, and let the Holy Spirit uh, strengthen us, Father, as we study your word and grow more into the likeness of Christ, Father. We may make mistakes, Father, but you're a loving Father who, who guides us through our ups and downs, Father. Let us learn from our mistakes and grow 
from strength to strength in our relationship with you and grow from strength to strength in the word of God, Father. We pray, Father, that as we continue in this journey, studying thy word, that we will, will be a blessing, Lord, in whatever we do, wherever we are, Father. And as you have taught us to be the salt and the light, Lord, let us focus on being the salt and the light wherever we are, Father, irrespective of uh, as students or in our workplace, wherever we are, Father. Let us stand up, Lord, for the word, Lord. Stand up for the truth, Lord. Be bold, Lord, like uh, the disciples of Christ, Lord. To be bold and to stand up for the truth and stand up for thy word, wherever we are, Father. We ask this, Lord Jesus Christ, in thy precious name. We also pray for blessing upon all the teachers and all the students, Lord, and their families. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Brother Sanjay. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Uh, we shall meet in the class of next week. God bless. Bye for now.